All right. Are you sure you're ready? Let's do it. Okay. Three, two, one. If you didn't read that warning, again, let me reiterate, do not watch this video if you are faint of heart. This video does contain some shocking footage. It's potentially triggering to PTSD victims. This is for medical, educational purposes only. We would never glorify this for any reason. This is a pretty unfortunate accident, but we are ready to go over the footage together and see what we can learn from it, talk about safety, talk about our plans for the future, and there is a chance that some of this is still going to be censored. We're not sure at the time of recording how much will be censored, but we want to keep our channel. And if we put up too much graphic content, there's a chance the entire channel gets demonetized. And because of that, if you do see some censored content, that's why the entire unedited, uncensored footage will be available on Patreon if that's the case. That's pretty much the only way we can do this while still keeping our channel. So. Our link to Patreon will be in the description below and you can go watch it there. But again, do not watch it if you can't handle this because it is very shocking. He's okay with showing the footage that's here. He wants to watch it. He wants to show you guys so we can learn from it. So Adam is back and thankfully recovering. I have returned indeed. It has. <laughs> you said one like and I'll come back and here you are. Yes, I did get at least one. It might have been me. I'm not sure. How would you say you're doing now? A lot better. Still takes a lot of uh, wound care. I don't think I'm out of the woods on that yet. Probably still got a solid few months on that. Uh, the nerve stuff, never know. We'll get into that later. But. Yeah, people have seen the footage, but it's been blurred. Um, right. We've done some updates on the hospital and everything, but before we watch it, if you don't know what's going on right now, stop watching this. Our last video yeah. has all of the context. Um, we were firing different launchers. We had a Carl Gustav M2 launcher and the RPG-7. Yep. And we had a catastrophic failure during launching basically the final shot of the day. Of course. So yeah, if you don't know what's going on, please go watch our last episode and then return if you feel like you can handle watching what happened. We were studying the effects of the backblast from RPGs because they are um, extremely dangerous. As we saw with the ballistic hand. Yeah, and then as we were doing it to a head, I remember counting down to one, and then next thing I knew, I was on the ground and my arms were entirely black. These aren't sleeves, these are all uh, bandages. They used to be all the way up, but this one's healing pretty good. The rocket launcher basically exploded. I've unfortunately seen this footage several times. Um, I had to <laughs> save soul. all the footage <laughs> and you know, edit it and prepare all these clips for you, but you've seen nothing other than your memories of like the aftermath. And then the same centered one that is in the, the previous episode. Yep, correct. Uh, I also, for you guys, I haven't seen any of my gear. I've seen the launcher because we got it demilled mm -hmm. and sent to us and I've put it back in the configuration that w it was found on the ground. So when we get to the launcher, that's exactly how it was. All right, so I already know what to expect with this and it's already making my heart kind of go. So I'm, I'm mostly curious how this is gonna go for you. You've been deployed, you've seen stuff before, but it's gonna be different when it's you and you're watching it. And when we were in Texas, I talked to Scott from Kentucky Ballistics who went through something very similar and he kind of warned me of that too. All right, so I guess we'll see. Uh, what's this gonna be first? Like, is this slow-mo, is this normal uh, this speed? Is, this is the normal footage from the red camera, which is our main okay. normal first. angle. And you'll hear your countdown as you remember, and it'll happen. And then from there, you know, we can talk about this shot however much you want, however many times you wanna see it, and then we can move on to high speed. Um, and yeah, so. All right. We'll just see what we can do as far as what we can learn from this. This is the three, two, one word. Okay. All right. Are you sure you're ready? Let's do it. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> shit. Call 911. And here comes all the oh, swear fuck. words in the response. Oh shit, what do we do? What's, what's bleeding? It's his face. Call 911. I'll call it, I'll call it. I don't know if you can see there, but like my body was already like tremoring. Holy and... shit. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, you can already see. I've got skin grafts right there. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that rocked my um, shit. <laughs> you, you want me to pull it back? Yeah. Um, okay. We'll get into some of this in the high speed, but I mean, you were, you're inside an explosion for an instant and it, oh, it, it oh, throws yeah. you. There, there isn't a, a second of that that I could see on that first one where I even, there was no attempt to catch myself. I'm, I'm instantaneous. Oh, you're, yeah. Like, you're done. Like, you are immediately unconscious as far as I can tell. That was nuts. All right. You want to see it again? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Dude, I can't even see my helmet leave frame. I know. Shit. Call 911. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. What do we do? What's, what's bleeding? It's Another thing I want to point out while I'm thinking about it. So when people experience trauma in terms of like blunt force trauma, it's not uncommon for your body to seize up in whatever position it was in. Something that happened to you, you can see it right here. Like your, your right hand that was grasping that front handle there clamped up in that way. So when you're laying there, keep in mind this camera was way off further left than we were. Okay. So it can see your fingers there. We couldn't. So oh. one of the things we, th what we saw was your burnt arm and then nothing. Oh. So there was all sorts of things of like, did this happen, did that happen kind of thing. Three, two, one. <laughs> Shit. That's when you start gaining consciousness. Oh, fuck. Again. So I would say oh, probably shit, 10, 15 seconds you were unconscious. It's his face. Do you have recollection of that at all? Of like, No, not yet. Okay. Nope. Because the, the first thing I saw when like my eyes met your face was your jaw definitely got like shoved somewhere it's not supposed to be. The lower part of this part of your jaw had like moved out and it was pushing your skin out some. And the bottom part of your jaw, what's that bone there? Is that the mandible? I think so. Okay, that the whole bottom part of your face was a bit sideways. And then seeing all the burns and thinking for a second, maybe you lost your hand and the smoke and just like the shock setting in, it was like, what actually happened here? I mean, the launcher looks like it left too. Oh, it went up. That, it, it went say, up that's not where I was. I was, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it launched. What's that? We're calling 911. For what? We're calling 911. For what? You're, you're bleeding. From where? You're bleeding from inside He's your doing head. the right thing there, holding me down. Yep. Do you have memory of this? I don't think yet. So you just turned off your own mic there accidentally and then it okay. comes back on later. <laughs> but what, what's interesting here is your brain knows something's wrong, obviously. Right. And I think the first thing that kicks in for you with your medical training is figure out what's wrong and help. And it's weird because you're the person that needs the help. Right. So, <laughs> so you're asking like what happened and then when, when Todd says we're calling 911, you're asking like what for, like why? So I don't know if that's like your brain's shock and confusion or if your brain is still trying to figure out like who do we need to help, like what's going on? Probably like, do you remember more. asking those questions? No. Okay. Nope. What is all that smoke from? Uh, fire extinguisher. Oh, the back okay. blast set off a small fire behind gotcha. you. Okay. We're here. Help us on the way. Did I just ask if it blew up? Yep. Is that what you asked? I think so. What happened? It blew up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I said it all jacked up because my jaw was crooked. Is it weird seeing yourself like... It's very it's weird. Like, it's like... It's a memory that doesn't exist for you, but it's you. Yeah, I don't remember any of this. Okay. Because you're about to see one of the first memories that you've told me about, which is talking about the medical bag. Yeah. And what to get out of it. That's coming up soon. So it's probably, let's see, it's been over two minutes since it happened. Oh, wow. So that much of your memories, Dang. at least right now, doesn't exist. In my truck. First aid is in this truck, you said. Okay. Is that where your memory comes back? No. no. Inside the, the, the palm is going to be on his right side, right here. Where my inside the big rocket. There's a walk. Yeah, right there. Okay. Yep. So your memory took three and a half minutes to come back. Good grief. Oh, uh, you can't see it. I'm digging. Okay. Because I remember digging in the bag. Just off it's camera. Just off camera. Okay. Yeah. This has to be surreal for you because you you never saw your at least your face from an outside perspective no. until you were like in, in the, the hospital in the trauma bay. Yeah. But for a while there. That laceration in your face was bleeding so much it was down on your neck. And I think that was confusing some people. They thought your neck was bleeding. So they were oh. applying pressure there first. 
um, until it was more obvious it was coming from your cheek. Gotcha. I don't have any medical allergies. <laughs> okay. Oh, Any heart things they need to know about? No, nope, no okay. heart conditions, no medical allergies. I'm probably dehydrated. Okay. Yeah. They're probably going to give you saline yeah, immediately. They're going to give saline IV when they get here. Is my yeah. right arm burned? Uh, is my right arm burned? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there more of that, the big ones? So this is when we start smearing all the stuff all over you, applying these pads. And... About this time was I think my brain kind of went, okay, like someone else is doing the things that I was wanting to get done and then I don't remember kind of drifted after that. off. Yep. But you said I stayed up and talked and yeah. So about this is when I thought I should probably turn off the cameras because it didn't feel like the right thing to do and then later I went and turned the camera back on because I'm like, this should probably be documented. Okay. But was it on high speed? I don't even know or care. <laughs> <laughs> or care. <laughs> there is a little bit more of later on. This is you being treated. Oh, okay. So we got like actual. Looks yeah. like law enforcement showed up first, and then. Do you remember this sitting there and talking to officers? Nope. After the like kind of first aid stuff, I don't remember anything until the helicopter. Okay. So yeah, they kind of just look you over until the helicopter gets there, make sure, make sure you're covered up, and this shot isn't nor is, isn't as slow as we normally do. For this, we had the flex camera, 3,000 frames a second to see everything, and then the 2512 is like close in on like this area. Okay. So this isn't gonna give us like hyper detail, but it's still we're gonna see something. Yeah, there you go. Oh, shit. Yep. It's, it's like a war movie shot. Like it's, it's one of those things you can't fake basically. It's Michael, so... Michael Bay eats your heart <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, look, there's the plate. Yeah, let me, let me wind that back. Holy shit. So it started normal. Yeah. I mean, rockets moving. We can see some propulsion coming. So it like, it didn't instantaneously malfunction. Like, oh my God. This is the first glimpse of it going off. Yeah, look, it's like yeah. bulging. And look at all that fight. Like, I don't have a beard now, but they they shaved that off. Yeah. No, I, you, I lost almost no You hair. had basically your full facial hair intact. And I was very surprised because, like, look. Hell? Like, you're in, oh my you're in God, flames for dude. a while. If you saw this footage and didn't have any context, would you not have thought like that would kill a person? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Well, it's no wonder all the doctors told me they <laughs> thought I should be dead. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, it's, it's worth saying like your helmet got blown off of you, your eye protection got blown off of you, your plate carrier vest unfolded, your plate yeah. flew out, your bracelet got thrown off. Never did find that. So the helmet, you can see I don't have it strapped. Mm -hmm. I didn't like buckle my chin strap, but that one has um, a headband retention. It tightens like um, like a hard hat. Okay. So, I mean, it was tensioned to my head. It wasn't just like plopped on there with nothing holding it on. It was tensioned. Oh man, that launcher went high. Yeah. And it's like actively flaming out of the failure point. And then just absolutely you, you ragdoll. Can, you can tell you were unconscious because you're not grimacing. Like, yeah, you're just, no, that's... you're just falling. So about two to three milliseconds, you were engulfed in like raw explosive flames, which isn't a long time in terms of footage, but that's all it takes. But if you think of the injury list that I listed, TBI, a traumatic brain injury, a temporal skull fracture causing a brain bleed, cheekbone was broken in two places, my jaw may have been like dislocated or misaligned. A laceration to my cheek, anywhere from 10 to 15% of my upper extremities were third degree burns requiring skin grafts. Small fragmentations throughout. It all happened, happened in, in two, two to three, three seconds. seconds. Yep. I mean, you can even see the first frame that you start to get hit, like it contacting your shoulder and wrapping around your hand. Like this right here, is the last millisecond of you unharmed. Right. And then the next millisecond, you're already being harmed right there. That's nuts. Like even here, your body doesn't know what's happened yet. Nope. Nobody knows it's happened yet, even if they were watching it with their eyes. So the big question is what caused this? 
And I think the main things that we can rule out that people wondered about was, A, did the ballistic head prevent it from venting quickly enough to cause it? So if we go back to the first high speed angle here, by the time the blast is hitting the dummy in the head, it's already exploding. Right. So it's just now touching the dummy and the entire rest of the launcher is already yeah, It's exploding. already gone. Yeah. So we can at least rule, rule that out. The other thing is... Some people had talked about the smoke around the oh, uh, yeah. trigger sure pack. That. Yeah. In order to reactivate it, you have to basically drill or mill out that previously welded in rod, put your own firing pin in, and kind of weld that in place. Yep. So New trigger pack. There's always a chance that it's not perfectly sealed and you'll get a little bit of smoke venting out. So in no way does that contribute to the failure. There are sometimes places that smoke will vent out. The rocket's moving, so that wasn't like yeah. jammed in there. Right, no, it wasn't jammed at all. Kind of proper procedure for these launchers is that you should clean them pretty often. So yep. RPGs that'll fail out in the field are ones that have been fired so many times they get gunked up on the inside. There's metal fatigue that happens over time. Okay. So that's a normal thing that can happen, but it wasn't the case here. I think I think we cleaned it with both like actual solvent cleaners yep. and the cleaning rod every three shots. So it's worth mentioning a little bit more specifically about how RPG launchers are reactivated by different companies. In our case, they went in and did the re-weld. Then they also pressure test it and x-ray the welds to you know check that they are good, high quality welds. And then the inside of the tube is then re-sleeved with a, basically another metal tube inside of it. So basically this launcher is about as good as it gets when it comes to reactivated launchers. However, a weld is still a weld, and that means that around the weld is a little bit more brittle than an actual completely new tube. So there's a very small inherent risk in working with welds. So even after pressure testing it, x-raying the welds, re-sleeving it, there are still things that can go wrong. It might be worth talking about the booster itself a little bit more. And so basically, all boosters, depending on the length, the size, they're always separated by sequential charges. I think it's usually separated by wood or cardboard. The firing pin comes in through here and yep. it initiates the first part of the blast. So it's by sequentially, sort of like a firework, sequentially moving through these different stages of the booster, that's what allows it to launch. Okay. And so... Build pressure in this chamber while yep. it goes down the... Yeah, so it's, okay. it's moving itself while it's moving through fuel, essentially. So in our case, a normal black powder booster might have six sequential charges in it that allows it to launch. There are longer ones that might have eight charges or 12 charges. Basically, however much mass you need to move or how far you want the rocket to go could dictate how long of a booster you need. In our case, our warheads were CNC machined real metal warheads instead of the thinner stamped or even printed rocket heads. So for the lighter ones, you might only need a short booster. In our case, we had a longer booster. So after examining all of the high-speed footage, after looking over the inside of the launcher, what basically happened here was the beginning part of the booster failed, which cascaded into the rest of the booster. A properly reactivated, high-quality launcher should still be able to handle that. However, there is now the chance that if part of the booster detaches from the rocket as it is moving out of the front of the launcher, it can then butt up against and even seal the Venturi part of the tube. And what that means is there is no longer anywhere for a lot of that pressure to go. And it all builds up at once, caused an immense amount of pressure. And the first place for that pressure to vent was the weld points. And that caused it to vent downward and into Adam's arm, his chest, basically all over his upper body. The weld acted as a release point by it failing. If it had not failed, this could have become like other videos on the internet where the launcher completely grenades. If you look closely at the failure, it's not the weld itself, which is usually almost a perfect rectangle that's cut into it. It is around the weld where the metal inherently becomes slightly more brittle. And they try to make up for this by re-sleeving it, but when you're dealing with this much pressure in such a short amount of time, and it can no longer vent through the Venturi as it's supposed to, that's a lot of pressure. 
say, and I had uh, quite a bit of downtime in the hospital. I Googled around, and if you go to enough websites, I saw some other RPG failures that looked a lot like that. And then as you can see, we, somebody, not me, uh, found as many pieces of the... You weren't crawling around <laughs> finding this stuff? <laughs> found as much of the furniture as, uh, as they could. Some of this so. got splintered into oblivion, but I mean, it's, uh... it's about how that stuff works. So it's one of those things where high-speed footage gives us a decent glimpse at what happened, but it's only going to be educated guesses. And yeah, this is right. based on all of the footage we've looked at, different people we've talked to. This is our best educated guess, and I feel like that's probably what happened. I think so. Um, do you want to look at your equipment you were wearing? Oh, absolutely. I already see a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is basically everything that helped protect your life. Yep. And just because of how production works sometimes, we already filmed multiple episodes with high explosive rockets beforehand. Yep. Um, so it just happened to be that production worked out that way. And you'll see a lot of our safety in those other videos. We didn't even shoot the things off our shoulders. We had them mounted to something with the pull string. Yeah, neither of us actually fired a high explosive rocket. Not once. So we were as about as safe as possible as you can be while still getting to at least fire a rocket once right. or twice. And the accident still happened. So I'm, I'm hoping this is a good reminder to anybody that works with firearms, explosives, any of this stuff, that no matter how safe you try to be consciously, there's always a risk of something going wrong. And it's not even something you may have overlooked. It's just like when you buy ammunition, there might be a bullet that is loaded a bit too much right. or a firework that had a little bit too much powder in it or whatever it might be. In the episode that we released, we talked about using prototype rounds. None of the RPG-7s were right. prototype rounds. We were discussing the Carl Gustav rounds. Yes. And even then, I shouldn't, probably shouldn't have used the term prototype. Yeah. They had been tested numerous times already. So those weren't things that we were just bringing out and firing yeah. for the first The time. only thing they did not have yet was the way the casing vents out the back right. to make it recoilless. Everything and else was, was proper. I think there's like a different fuse because there was a little bit of a delay between yeah. the two. But so none of the RPG stuff was prototype. That was all very standard. Especially the boosters. Boosters are like the same boosters you'd use for any test. Right, yeah. Todd, who's been in this industry for a long time, he gave us like the best chance at success at this. It, w it was his launcher. Nothing about his launcher caused this failure, which I no. think is important to point out. It's just like a gun. Like you give it the wrong ammo. It's not the gun's fault. Right. We gave it a booster that ended up failing and Yep, and I still talk to Todd daily. Yep. We're still friends. He has decided to leave the industry. Um, he did a lot of machine gun rentals and then launcher stuff. Being there, it affects people different ways in seeing things like that. I mean, yeah. y you've kind of talked to me about, um, it's like, it can be difficult. I mean, uh, and so he discussed it with his family and between himself and his family, they decided to get out of the business that and that that isn't guilt we need to point that right, out. right yes nope it was just a decision that they made so you will notice um, he closed down all of his social medias and his website and everything we had a few people point that out to us we're aware yep. um, he told us he was doing it that is that is his so. way of handling what is essentially a bit of mental trauma from this right. that is his way of handling it that's a totally personal thing and we're going to let him do that. That's yep. what he needs to do. Um, we all handle it differently, and that, that was his method. Yeah, Todd's, Todd's still a good friend of ours. Um, so, Absolutely. So please don't think that him doing that stuff was in any way guilt on his part. Because, nope. I mean, it'd, it'd be like if I didn't post this video just because that was my way of handling it. That's not guilt. That's just, it's different when you see videos on the internet of accidents and stuff. When it's your friend right in front of you, it's different. So just just have some respect and... Um, yeah, just give just give people space when they need it, I would say. Yeah. So as you guys can see, we're back at the range. We have a few high explosive rocket episodes still coming out. Um, thankfully, we're filmed before the accident. Yep. Um, so we still have some content to come, but we are ready to move forward. And as as a way that you guys could support us moving forward, a way to support his healing and medical bills, things like that, we have a new line of merchandise that just came out. And if you guys want to buy that, that is a great way to directly support him and yep. get something back in return to show your support yeah. for the channel. Absolutely. 
Yep, it's over on uh, Bunker Branding. Uh, we got picked up. We get to uh, work with those guys. Great group of people. That'll over be there. Fun. Yeah. Um, once you head over there, or maybe you're going to flash it on the screen, you'll see that you can get our classic stuff. Yep. And then also, in good fashion, I made a meme shirt. <laughs> And before anybody freaks out, as they it, do in the gun industry, <laughs> it was my idea. Um, this isn't, you know, like anybody taking advantage of the situation. I came up with it. Bryce made it a reality, but it was my idea because this isn't going to stop me. I'm back. We're going to go full tilt. I mean, I've still got, you know, a little bit of a limp and things, but yeah, we'll, we'll take uh, things slow. We're not done. Uh, we want to. We believe in this channel. We think it's doing extremely well. All thanks to everybody that hits that subscribe button and sticks around. There's been an immeasurable amount of positive support lately yeah. for you. We pretty well believe that we have found our core audience of people that enjoy our content and believe in us. We believe in us too, so that means a lot to us. So. We're going to keep moving forward, and yep. Patreon is a great way to support us. That's going to start getting some exclusive content over there. Yes. This entire episode is going to go into more detail, basically an extended cut of going into more detail on your armor and stuff, what that went through, a little bit more detail about your injuries, even an exclusive angle of the high speed Ooh. In, in that cut. So okay, gotcha. there's another shot, 100,000 frames a second, that hasn't been shown in this one. We just wanted to make sure this video could get up, explain to you all exactly what happened, at least to the best of our knowledge, and then just move forward. Bring The next yep. couple months are going to have some pretty wild episodes, so if you guys would not mind subscribing now, you're going to get some excellent content coming well into 2024. We try to keep things kind of clean and professional on this main channel. If you want to see us a little bit more uncensored, uh, go check out the Unsubscribe podcast. We had some beers with the boys, and we kind of let some yeah, jokes they're, fly. They're, so. they're awesome people. So. <laughs> yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Head over to Unsubscribe. Consider supporting us on Patreon for extra content, and consider supporting us with merchandise. I think that new shirt's going to be really cool. I think the shirt's cool. I really like the sticker, too. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you very soon.